Welcome to May of 1981. The movie scene is bleak with Jason and Dolly leading the way. Two future superstars are on television and the music charts are either very relaxing or very lame depending on your preferences. I'm going with lame. All of this plus a look at the cost of living is coming up right now. You're watching This Week in the 80s, so stay tuned. What are you watching on television? Well, if you're the wholesome type, you're watching The Waltons on CBS. It's a story of the Waltons who live in a house and say goodnight John Boy a lot and I don't really know. I never actually watched it. I did a bunch of research on it, but you know what? You know what the Waltons is. I don't have to tell you. It was a nice show about nice people and whatever, because you know what? ABC had Mork and Mindy. 8 p.m. Thursday night, the slot upon slots. Like this is the best slot there is, right? Thursday night, 8 p.m., Mork and Mindy. Robin Williams, Pam Dauber, getting it done. Jonathan Winters checked in later as Mirth, the man child. Uh, Robin Williams is probably my favorite actor of all time. He was just always there. He was always with us. And, you know, he was like your friend. He was just spectacular. Robin Williams was just top of the line. And in Mork and Mindy, he was so over the top. He was just an absolute blast. I can remember as a kid, uh, just eight years old, nine, seven years old, coming home from hockey practice and watching Mork and Mindy. It was just my favorite show. At 8.30 on ABC, we had Bosom Buddies. Tom Hanks and Peter Scolari breaking through, making us all laugh all night long. There were so many jokes on this show that I completely didn't get. Like, I didn't understand any of that stuff, but I still watched it and I still loved it. And the intro with Billy Joel was spectacular. Just an absolute great show. Mork and Mindy into, into Bosom Buddies. Like, there has never been a greater lineup. At 8 o'clock on NBC, we had Real Kids. It was a spinoff of Real People. Real People was a fun show. Remember Byron Allen and Sarah Purcell, Skip Stevenson, and they showed people doing things, and we liked it. Well, they figured, let's go ahead and just take that and make kids do the same thing. Well, they had Peter Billingsley, which is always good news, as the host, and it was a, ter a terrible flop. Nobody cared. Nobody wants to watch that. So it got canceled very quickly. At 9 o'clock, you had a decision to make. Are you looking for action, or are you looking for comedy? If you don't want either one of those two things, stay on NBC. They've got Dracula from 1979. It's Frank Langella as Dracula and Sir Lawrence Olivier as Van Helsing. It might have been all right, but that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for action. So let's talk about the comedy. ABC had Barney Miller and then Taxi. These are a couple of fantastic, iconic, classic shows. Now, I was eight at the time, so of course, I'm not watching either one of those because those jokes are not going to ring true in my mind. I'm begging my parents to let me stay up to watch Magnum P.I. So it's Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck is amazing. How's this lineup for Thursday night, guys? It's Robin Williams, then Tom Hanks, then Tom Selleck. That's why the 80s are so amazing. We had so many awesome talents just everywhere. Right, so I'm going to go with Magnum. You might have gone with NBC. You could have been watching Dracula all night long, as if you don't already know that story. But if you did, you would have missed the 10 o'clock slot on CBS. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Newhart. Or maybe you want to stick on ABC after the comedies and watch 2020, which is a show that's just been running since the beginning of time. At that point in time, I probably would have switched over to Dracula. In May of 81, we really didn't have that big 80s influence yet. In fact, this is basically just late 70s music that got carried over. They hadn't changed the style. And honestly, some of you are going to absolutely love this playlist. You're just going to die for it. And then some of you are going to be like me and think, what the hell is that all about? 30 to 40 is pretty good. Like there's some good songs from 30 to 40. The top is shocking, like just absolutely terrible. I played it in the car today and the passenger said, this is unbearable music. Please stop playing it. No joke. So let's take a look at 40 to 30 and we'll get closer. As we get closer to number one, the music is just going to continually get worse. Here we go. Uh, checking in at number 40 is Santana with winning number 39, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, The Waiting. There, if, if you don't like the song, The Waiting by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, there's something wrong with you. Number 38, the 80s stalwart, Hollow Notes, You Make My Dreams. Number 37, T.O. Shepard with I Loved Every One of Them. What's that crap? Number 36, The Police, Don't Stand So Close to Me. Number 35, Steve Winwood, While You See a Chance. That's a fun tune. That's one you can crank up and sing along. 
Number 34, blessed are the believers by Anne Murray. What is that stuff? Like I put this song on and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I can't imagine driving down the road with the, the friends in the car and you know, you're doing 55, of course, on the expressway and that comes on and you're like, yeah, crank that up. No, no, throw the, throw the radio out the window so it never has to happen again. Anyway, 33, Rick Springfield, Jesse's Girl. There's a real 80s tune. Number 32, Quincy Jones, I Know Carita, whatever that's all about. Number 31, all right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here, and I usually don't, but uh, this one really stands out. Some people just love this song. They think it's groundbreaking and fun and harmless, and I think it's just literally one of the most horrible things that was ever recorded. Blondie's "Rapture." Don't ever play that in my presence. I will literally break whatever's making that sound. If it's your car, I'll run it into a tree. If it's your phone, I'll put it in a blender. Whatever the case may be, don't ever play Blondie's Rapture near me. That is seriously one of the worst things that was ever created. And there's been a lot of bad things that have been created. Number 29, now we're starting to get really soft again. Her Town 2 by James Taylor and uh, J.D. Southern. James Taylor in the top 40. This is this is early 80s stuff. It's really like late 80, late 70s, but it's still bad. Uh, you want to talk about bad? It's going to continue. 28. Somebody's Knocking by Terry Gibbs. Wow, is that a terrible tune. Number 27. Finally, we can get something that we can turn up. Hold on loosely by a 38 special. Now, that's a song you can crank. That's a song you can sing along with and enjoy, but not number 26. Since I Don't Have You by Don McLean. Yeah, remember that guy that sang American Pie? He had some other hits too, but no one ever remembers them. That's one of them, since I don't have you. No thanks. 25, This Little Girl, Gary U.S. Bonds. That's just another forgettable tune. Don't know how that ended up at number 25. Number 24, Love You Like I Never Loved Before by John O'Banion. Guys, what is this stuff? How, how do we ever accept this? I mean, listen, I was eight. I, I wasn't really at fault. Uh, some of you are older than I am, so it's your fault. These songs are just miserable. That's okay. Here we go. We're, we're going to get saved at number 23. Wait, no, we're not. What are we doing in love by Dottie West with Kenny Rogers? Listen, I like Kenny Rogers. He's fun. The gambler, the cow to the county. Something's burning. I think it's love. This isn't one of them, though. Dottie West with Kenny Rogers at number 23. Number 22, as if things weren't soft enough, we've got Christopher Cross, Say You'll Be Mine. Top 20. Number 20, America by Neil Diamond. When I was a kid, I had this 45 and I basically wore it out. I love that song. It's still pretty good. When I was listening to the playlist in the car driving to work, I cranked this one up. I turned it back down when I got to number 19, I Love You by the Climax Blues Band. Guys, I'm not kidding. This song actually exists. If you remember it, please tell me in the comments that you remember that song. Because I certainly didn't remember it. And I wish I hadn't heard it on the playlist. That's bad. Number 18, The Who with You Better You Bet. Typical Who song, a whole bunch of gibberish and a whole bunch of music going on. People love The Who, so I won't bash them too badly, but they weren't for me. Number 17, before he was a Mellencamp, he was just John Cougar, and he ain't even done with the night. A little bit of a slow song for John Cougar, but that's a good one. Number 16, How About Us by Champagne. What? Well, Ray Parker did A Woman Needs Love. Listen, I can't bash him too badly. He's at number 15, but that's a terrible song. As soon as this starts playing, you're going to think, oh, I know that song. And then you're just going to instinctively start singing different parts of it. It's in the playlist. Look in the playlist section, find the May 1981 playlist and listen to this one and tell me you're not singing along to it. It's the medley by the Stars on 45. They basically took like three old songs and then like 10 old Beatles songs. They put them together and called it a song. We loved it. I remember playing it on the jukebox at the pizza shop down the street. It was awesome. Number 13, Sweetheart by Frankie and the Knockouts. I listened to this song three times. I don't ever want to listen to it again. Number 12, Eric Clapton with uh, and his band with I Can't Stand It. I listened to that song one time. You know what my joke's going to be, right? Yep, I can't stand it. Number 11, John Lennon, Watching the Wheels. Great song. That song transcends time. John Lennon transcends time. Number 10, Too Much Time on My Hands by Styx. Number 9, Kiss on My List, More Hollow Notes. Number eight, folks, please, please tell me what this is all about. Please, I thought this was a joke. I sought it out. I played it once and I thought this was on the radio. It's a song called Sukiyaki 
by a taste of honey. Cannot explain it. Can't make any excuses. That's bad. Number seven, Living Inside Myself by Gino Vanelli. Uh, this is one that when you listen to it, you might not recognize it now, but when you listen to it, you'll start singing the chorus. Number six, a true 80s song, Take It On The Run by REO Speedwagon. Heard it from a friend who? Heard it from a friend who? Heard it from another you've been messing around? Dude, it took you three levels to find out that she's cheating on you. Get with it. Number five, former number one hit, Morning Train by Sheena Easton. Number four, Juice Newton, Angel of the Morning. Number three, Being With You, Smokey Robinson. Number two, Just the Two of Us by Grover Washington Jr. When I listened to this song on the radio, you know, I was eight years old and I always sang along with it. And uh, one day my father said, what did you just say? And so I repeated what I said because I thought that was the words. Just the two of us, we can be naked if we try. Nope, that wasn't right. And the number one song for this week in May of 1981, Betty Davis Eyes by Kim Carnes. This is about the only Kim Carnes song that I know, but somehow she got included in We Are the World to sing her iconic phrase, when we, that's it. That's a playlist. Find it on my channel, turn it up, listen to it once, and find a different playlist that has actually good music. On the nightly news, the top story was the assassination attempt on the Pope. Other stuff was typical, as you would expect from the time, international crises, stock market, U.S., USSR relations, but the commercials are what was sort of fun about the time. The first commercial break had Schweppes mixers, TDK cassettes, and Hearts 2-in-1 flea and tick collars. The second commercial break, Ortho Weed Killer, Sunkiss Products, Somonex Sleep Aid, and Roman Meal Bread. The final commercial break, Reuniti Wines, Olympic Overcoat Paints, and Radio Shack. Let's take a look at the cost of living in 1981. The Dow Jones ended that year at 8.75. Interest rates were at 15.75%. The average income was $21,000 and the average house price was $24,000. Rent at the time was 315 bucks and a gallon of gas would cost you $1.25. A new television was about $400 and a pound of turkey was 55 cents. If you really wanted to spend your money in 1981, the Star Wars figure set was still $29.95. The box office was quiet for this week in 1981. There wasn't really all that much to go and see. Take This Job and Shove It was debuting, and that turned out to be a sleeper hit over the course of time, but it wasn't really that big of a deal when it was first released. It had a pretty good cast, Robert Hayes and Art Carney, Martin Mull and Barbara Hershey, David Keith as well. But it was one of those comedies that over the course of time made a bunch of money, but when they first released it, it was kind of uh, forgotten about way to put it nicely, I guess. Nine to five was still in the theaters working nine, to, which would explain why the song is still on the charts. Now, maybe you want something a little more interesting, a little more historic. Maybe you're going to go with Excalibur. The fun thing about Excalibur is all of the actors in it that are just getting their career started at the time. We had Helen Mirren, Patrick Stewart, Liam Neeson, Kieran Hines, and Gabriel Byrne in early roles. Maybe you just wanted a typical 80s slasher and one delivered, Friday the 13th, part two. It was exactly what you think it was. You don't have to see it to know what happened. A whole bunch of kids went off, a bunch of them separated from the group, a bunch of them got naked, and a bunch of them got killed. Run the credits, is Caveman. You probably didn't see it. Not that many people did. The cast is pretty fun. Like it's, it would be cool if this was a good movie to see these, these actors and musicians up on the big screen doing a good job. Dennis Quaid's always fun. Shelley Long, I don't really like her, but a lot of people do. Barbara Bach, and no joke, Ringo Starr. So you got Ringo Starr as the star playing a dude named Atuk, and they're spoofing there. It's a satire slapstick comedy on uh, cavemen. That's going to do it for me here on This Week in the 80s. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click the bell. Leave me a comment. And tell me which one of those songs is actually worth listening to. And I'll see you next week for more This Week in the 80s.